friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. Normally, in all mobile devices, stopwatch, timer and alarm clock features are all rolled into one app called the clock. I have already taught how to make alarm clock and countdown timer, but I haven't taught how to make a stopwatch. A stopwatch is a good way of finding out how long you take to do something. Let's have a look at the demo of what we are making today. As you can see that this stopwatch app looks quite professional and counts in minutes, seconds and centiseconds, just like Android's built-in stopwatch. It also has a resume feature, which should be a must feature in all good stopwatches. So let's begin. Open up MIT App Inventor, go to projects, start a new project. Let's call it stopwatch, no spaces in the project name. So the designer view of the project has opened up where we will design the screen. For screen one properties on the right, make a line horizontal center, background color white, screen orientation portrait and we are going to turn off the title. From the layout palette on the left, drag and drop a horizontal arrangement onto the viewer. For this horizontal arrangements properties, make align horizontal center, align vertical center, make the height 30% and width should be fill parent. Duplicate this horizontal arrangement by selecting it and pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl V on the keyboard for Windows or Command C, Command V for Mac OS. From the user interface palette, drag and drop a label inside this first horizontal arrangement, rename it to time label, make the font bold, font size 45 and change the text on it to 00, zero space colon space 00, zero space colon space and 00. zero. Again from the user interface palette, drag and drop a button and put it inside the second arrangement, rename it to reset button, make its background color light gray, font should be bold, font size should be 20, the width should be 30%, make sure to press OK, shape is rounded and the text on it says reset and the text color is dark gray, okay? Now duplicate this button, rename this one to start stop button. So we will have the same button for starting and stopping the stopwatch. Okay, now the changes in it, just change the background color to blue, the text on it to start and the text color to white. Now we need a label for spacing between these two buttons so drag a label and put it between these two buttons and remove all the text from it and make the width 2%. Lastly from the sensors palette drag and drop a clock sensor. This is an invisible component and in its properties Uncheck timer enabled, timer always fires will stay on and we are going to change the timer interval to 10 milliseconds which actually means 1 centisecond. So we want a clock's timer to be triggered after every 1 centisecond. Our screen design is done so let's go to the block section. First we are going to define the global variables. So the first global variable is our start time. And we are going to assign it a maths block 0. Right click on it and duplicate it. Change this to pause time. So this is the time at which we stop the watch. And again duplicate it. And this is our timer started. And it is actually a boolean variable. That is a boolean variable is a variable that can have the value of true or false. So we are going to give it the false value. This is a variable which is maintained to switch between the start and stop state of the stopwatch's start stop button, okay? Because we're using the same button for starting and stopping. We will also make a procedure for converting 
the single digits to a number with zero before it. So, for example, one second will be displayed as zero one to keep the look of our timer uniform. So, from procedures, get this procedure which returns a result. Name it format time. Now, this will take in an input number. So, click on the cog wheel and drag and drop this input inside it. And now we need the code for it to add a zero to it if the length of x is actually one. That is, there's only one digit in x. So what we are going to do is we're going to go to control and we're going to scroll down and get this if then else block. Okay. Now we are just going to check using a math block of equal to if the length of x. So the length is inside the text block. So length of what? x. So if you hover over x, we will get the getter for it. So if the length of get x is equal to 1. So just go to math and get the number block and make it 1. Then we are going to join a 0 with x. Okay. So go to text and get the join block. And what are we going to join? Get the empty text block and put 0 in it. And here just duplicate x. So this will add a 0 before x if it is a single digit. Otherwise, just return x as it is. Okay. So this is done. Now get the click event for our start stop button. Okay. And when the start stop button is clicked, we are going to use an if else block from control to check in this if condition if our timer started is false, which will be when the app is started. Okay. So go to logic, get the equal to block and hover over timer started to get its get block. So get timer started is equal to false. So if it is false, this is the case when the timer hasn't started yet. So we should start it. And in the else section, we will add code for stopping the timer. So what should happen when the timer is started? We should assign the current device time to our start time variable. So if I hover over start time, I can get the setter for it. A setter is basically a setting block. So this is a setter for start time. And we are going to give it the current time by using our clock sensors clock dot now procedure. So if I go down. This will return the time of the device on which we are running the app. Okay. Next, we are going to set our timer started to true. Okay. So again, hover over it, get the setter for it and make it true. I can duplicate this and make it true. Okay. Next, we are going to change the text on our start stop button. So if I click here on the start stop button, I can get its set text block and here I'm going to change the text to a, a text block that says stop. Okay. And we are also going to change its color. Okay. So background color, which expects a color block. So go to colors and get this red. Okay. And most importantly, we need to enable our timer. So click on clock one and get its set clock one dot timer enabled to true. So again, we can duplicate this true block and bring it here. This done. And another important thing is that we should also disable our reset button. Our reset button should not be enabled this one, it should not be enabled when the stopwatch is running. This will disable it. And what happens in the else section? 
we stop the timer so duplicate it from here and make it false we change the text on the start stop button to resume remember our app has the resuming feature and we change its color to blue again so this one and we also make this false again the status variable so that it can be started again the next time we come inside the start stop button click event and we have to enable our reset button because now it should be allowed to be pressed once we have stopped our stopwatch okay so this is the start stop button code it's not complete yet because i still need to add the pause feature to it but i will come to it later let's work on our clocks timer code okay so if i click on clock and get its timer event in which we will find the duration between the device's current time and the time at which the clock was started okay and we will show this duration in minutes seconds and centiseconds this will be updated every centisecond as that is the timer interval for our clock so first in this clock's timer event we are going to use a local variable so plug this in here initialize local variable and we are going to call it time duration and we are going to use this clock sensors duration procedure so there's a procedure just for this and we are going to find the duration between the start time so we can click on variables and get the get block and choose start time from here and clocks now procedure so what is the current time so here it is so this will give us the time duration between these two times in milliseconds now remember that it is in milliseconds now within this orange section of our local variable get the setter block for our time label text okay and we are going to give it a join from text block but we are going to add some more slots to it we need a total of 5 So just click on the cog wheel and drag the strings so we have five slots here and two of them will be the colons so space colon space and you can also duplicate it by pressing control c control v or command c command v here minutes will be shown then seconds and centiseconds now we have these procedures in the clock component that converts a duration into minutes and seconds so we are going to use both of them but the thing that you need to remember is that it will convert the entire duration into minutes or seconds okay so it can even give us 220 seconds for example but we don't want to show 220 seconds to the user as 220 seconds has 3 minutes and 40 seconds in it and it should only show 40 seconds so how to fix this just take the modulo of seconds with 60 modulo returns the remainder of a division so 220 mod 60 is actually 40 so what we are going to do is that first of all we are going to go to maths and get this modulo block and here from maths again we are going to plug in a 60 here okay and on the left hand side this will be minutes okay what will come here the time duration so if i hover over it i can get the get block for it and i plug it in here and before plugging it in here in the first lot of join remember we have to call a procedure format time so that if it is a single digit then it will be converted into zero and that single digit okay we are going to do the same thing for seconds okay so again we can duplicate that okay, put it here oh, the second is one went below so just take it out plug the time duration here and then plug it here okay but what about this last slot which should have centiseconds 
in it. This is a little trickier as we don't have a procedure for converting duration to centiseconds. So we will find it using our own code. That is, we are going to take modulo with 1000. Our time duration is already in milliseconds and divide by 10. So let's get the modulo block okay, and we can get it from here. Okay, modulo block, modulo and the time duration comes here. So duplicate it from here and we take the modulo with 1000. So I can duplicate the maths block and make it 1000 and we have to divide it by 10. So get the division block from maths, plug the modulo block here, okay, and again a maths block, but this time we change it to 10. This will be returned in decimal numbers, so we have to round it off. So again go to maths and get the round block and plug this one here. Let's remove the unused blocks and I forgot about this format time so let's do that too. So the procedure, format time and then plug this final thing here. So this is what our clock dot timer looks like. Okay. So next we come to our reset button code. So let me do it near here because we can duplicate a lot of code from here. So get its click event and when the reset button is clicked we are going to first of all set our timer started to false. We can get this from here. Okay and we are going to make our pause time equal to zero. So we can duplicate this block and choose pause time here but make it a maths block of zero and we are going to set our time label to zero zero. So same as we used in the designer view and last we are going to set our start stop buttons text to start okay so we have to bring it back to a position just like when the app is started okay if you test the timer right now it will function very nicely but instead of resuming the timer will start from zero again so what do you need for the resuming feature in our start stop buttons click event inside the else section start storing the time duration at which the stopwatch was stopped. So how can we do that? We are going to set our global pause time so I can duplicate it from here but instead of zero we are going to call clocks duration procedure and here the start is the global start time. So if I go down this is exactly the same code that I've written here. So start time and clock dot now. This was duplicated here. So we have saved the duration at which the stopwatch was stopped. And now inside the if condition when the clock is started we are going to check if pause time is zero. If it is zero then our start time will be clock dot now. So let me go to control and get the if then else block and from maths get the equal to block and from variables get the get block and choose pause time from here and if it is zero. Okay so if the pause time is zero then this means that either the stopwatch is being started for the first time or it is being started after a reset because remember we are setting the pause time to zero inside a reset button. Okay so in that case we are going to set our global start time to clock dot now. So I just need to put this here so let me reduce the size of it. Put this code on the side for the time being and I'm going to plug this inside here. So my start time is equal to clock dot now and remember that I have to put this code back. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back and then I'm going to put this code so that I don't forget again back to. And what will come inside the else? That means the pause time is not zero. This means there is some duration which has been saved when the stopwatch was stopped and we need to subtract it from clock dot now and set that as the start time. So this is the tricky part and just look at it carefully while I'm doing it. So again, duplicate the set for it. Global start time. Let me magnify the code a bit. I am going to call clocks add duration procedure. So where is it? This one. And here, what does it take in as input? It takes in the time. So I'm going to plug that here too. But what is the quantity? The quantity is the pause time. But we want to subtract it. So how to subtract it? We are going to multiply the current pause time by minus one to get a minus value of it and we add it and in a way we are subtracting the quantity from the current time. Okay, so go to maths, get the multiplication block and again go to maths and get this zero block and make it minus one. So make sure that you make it minus one and here it is the pause time. So I can duplicate the pause time from here and plug it in here. So pause time multiplied by minus one will actually, when we add it, will be actually subtracting the actual pause time from the current time. And this will be the time at which we should resume the stopwatch. So it will consider the previous time. Okay, let me clean up the code. Okay. So global variable format time start stop button code reset button and then our clocks timer code remove the unused blocks and we are good to go. This app is done and I hope you like this tutorial. If you like my work, please consider supporting it by buying me a cup of coffee. You can do this by clicking the coffee link in the video description. Also, please subscribe to my channel Obsidian Soft so that you don't miss any of the great projects that I have planned for you. Thank you for watching my video. Have a good day and goodbye.